welcome to Hello Vegan V. So now everything is getting a little bit cooler. It's time to get our winter wear out of the cupboards and get our fluffy socks on and cups of tea brewed. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how to incorporate huga into your life, but how to do it in a more ethical way and how to be cruelty free and still really immerse yourself in that kind of lifestyle. For those of you who do not know what huga is, it comes from the Danish and Norwegian word for wellness and coziness. People who incorporate huga into their life want to have coziness and that warm feeling in their daily lives and it's a kind of practice. When I first started incorporating huga into my life, I didn't even realize I was doing it. Um, I had recently turned minimalist and at the time I just really wanted to find a way to bring comfort into my life. I saw so many of these minimalist uh, videos and images and they all looked so cold and that's just not uh, that's just not what I like so I uh, was practicing bringing coziness into my own life and I just stumbled across Huga quite soon after doing that. I still wanted to have coziness and warmth in my life while still not having that many belongings and just living with things of value rather than things of uh, plenty and maximism. Do we ever stop and think what is the cost of that comfort? We live in a world where we take from animals and we take from the earth so much that sometimes our lifestyle comes at a cost. In the Huga movement there is a big focus on treating others with warmth and kindness and from my point of view that also stretches to the planet and the animals and so with that being said i have put together a list of things that we can all do to incorporate huga into our life in a more ethical cruelty free way while still living to the fullest and the coziest so i really hope you enjoy it and i really hope it helps i am the type of person that absolutely loves having a night in with a cup of tea a good book and a big fluffy blanket. As a vegan, I will never invest in wool. And sadly, a lot of people don't actually know the depressing lives that sheep live in order for us to have wool products such as blankets, socks, jumpers. Sheep in commercial farms are often shaved too early, which leads to them freezing to death. On top of that, in a lot of cases, they will have their tail docked which means they'll have their tail cut off. And a lot of the time this is done without any kind of anesthetic. I actually didn't realize maybe until five years ago that sheep are supposed to have long tails, kind of like dogs. I always thought that they had kind of little stumps, <laughs> but that is not the case. And the reason that they cut the tails off is to avoid some diseases but still, this is a very cruel and unethical practice. This is a treatment that is carried out in a very cruel and unethical way. And then on top of this, when the sheep gets too old or weak or ill, it will then be sent off to slaughter because it is no use to the wool industry anymore. If you like, I am going to post a video by the king himself, Earthling Ed, and he describes in great detail and in really informative depth um, just all about the wool industry and he explains it a lot more than I've explained it now so do go check that out if you are interested. The wool industry is cruel and is completely unnecessary. We have so many different products that we can use instead that do not strip sheep of their wool. There are plenty of alternatives to have fluffy cozy products such as bamboo hemp, organic cotton, and recycled plastic bottles. Another point when it comes to fashion, besides um, the wool industry, is shopping at secondhand shops. I've always been a massive advocate for charity shopping, but it wasn't until maybe seven months ago that I learned how unethical and how destructive the fashion industry is. It's a very wasteful industry when it comes to materials and then there's a whole other ethical side to it as well. Uh, 
so if you're interested in that you should really look into it um but basically i have decided that i no longer wear uh, that i will no longer buy brand new clothes for that reason and so now i only buy second hand clothing and something that i've really learned about doing this over my entire life is that when you buy something from a charity shop or a second hand shop it's generally very well made and it's very durable hence the reason it has made it into one of these second hand shops so if i feel the need to be buying any more clothes this year for the winter i will definitely be going to a second hand shop let me know if you will be doing the same next i'm going to be talking to you about the use of feathers when i was buying my duvet in japan i made a very clear effort to not buy anything with feathers in and i bought one that was made out of soft synthetic materials instead and not only was this more ethical it was so much cheaper as well so it was it was great for me um, as someone who did not want to support that industry and um, I'll talk to you a little bit why I don't support that industry. Usually when you have duvets and pillows that are filled with feathers, these feathers have been cruelly and painfully plucked from these birds. I've seen so many cases of people just holding down these birds and ripping out the feathers, and these birds will be bright red um, from swelling. This all happens while the bird is alive and fully conscious. This is called live plucking and if you uh, search live plucking you will find a ton of material and information on it. So that's why I personally do not buy feathers and uh, now I have this really cozy duvet which makes me look forward to going to bed every single evening. So there are plenty of alternatives that you can use instead of feathers that are just as soft. As I mentioned earlier, I used a synthetic kind of fluff and so there are plenty of ways that you can still have this huga coziness in your blankets and pillows but without the cruelty towards the birds. Next I'm going to talk to you a little bit about beeswax and candles. So I love candles, I find them so mesmerizing and cozy and I absolutely adore them but I tend to buy candles that do not have any beeswax in them. I was pretty shocked when I found out about the bee industry because it's not something that is as clear as the meat industry or the dairy industry. It's not quite as uh, pushed, I feel like, as other information about animal agriculture, but I'm going to share some of it with you today. In honey and beeswax manufacturers, the queen bee will often have her wings clipped, and this is to ensure that she cannot leave the hive. And as you know, the colony of bees will always stay wherever the queen bee is so if she cannot leave then the rest of them cannot leave similarly to on dairy farms the queen bee is artificially inseminated on something called a rape rack and uh, I don't feel I need to explain what that is because the name is pretty self-explanatory but it's a completely vile treatment and uh, it's just something I, I don't think a lot of people realize goes on in the bee industry. On top of that, all of the bees get gassed every time the beekeeper wants to remove the produce. And the queen bee is drugged and made to be in a dazed state constantly. Although the rest of the bees get smoked out um, regularly, this queen bee is always in this fuzzy, dazed state. So if you don't want to support this cruelty, then just simply don't buy beeswax and don't eat honey. Just so you can have a spoonful of honey in your tea, that spoonful is the same amount that a bee will make over the course of its entire lifetime. There is a ton more things wrong with this industry, but that's all I'm going to go into today. There is so much information online. As I said, it's not as uncovered as the more prominent industries like meat, dairy, whatever, but the information is still there for you to look it up. Alternatively, you can buy candles that do not have beeswax. You should check out my friend's business. It's called Evacool. It's got a selection of beautifully smelling and aesthetically pleasing candles as well as 
cute bags and loads of ethically sourced products. So I'm going to link them down below and you should definitely check them out if you are looking for getting some cruelty free candles in your life. The entire website is full of vegan products that will benefit your Huga lifestyle. As a Huga practicing vegan, I never like to miss out on my hot drinks, my tea and my coffee and my hot chocolate. I absolutely love embracing the kind of warmth and comfort of a hot cup of tea. The dairy industry is a very cruel industry and one of the main things that turned me vegan was seeing a baby cow being taken away from its mother within hours of it being born. That was enough for me and that was the dairy industry. That was not the meat industry. I mean, they're all linked. Female cows, as mentioned earlier, are sent to a vape rack regularly where they will be made pregnant over and over again to have their baby taken away from them within 24 hours. This is very traumatic and they will cry out for their baby for days. If the baby is a female, it will go to the same fate of its mother. If it's a male, it will be taken away and killed early to be made into veal. When the female cow's milk produce has slowed down, she will be killed for meat. So on that note, I'm gonna let you know some really delicious alternatives that you can have instead of using cow's milk. Right now I have soya milk, but some other cow milk alternatives include oat milk, rice milk, almond milk, hemp milk, coconut milk, walnut milk, and cashew milk. You can make beautifully frothy coffees without cow's milk. Um, I would personally recommend oat milk if you can get your hands on some of that because it's so creamy and delicious. It's my absolute favorite. Okay, so now we've talked a little bit about drinks, we're gonna talk about baking. And if you follow my Instagram, you know that I love baking. I love the smell of cake or bread filling up my entire house. So when baking, obviously I do not use egg. So I'm gonna let you know some of my favorite egg alternatives. Uh, like today, for example, I made pancakes, but instead of using egg, I used banana. So you can mash up one banana and it will be the alternative to one egg. And it has a really sweet, naturally sweet taste and it's very, um, like, it's a really nice texture for baking with. Um, that is my first choice. My second choice is flaxseed. It has so many health benefits. It's so uh, good for you. And when you mix it, one tablespoon of flax and two tablespoons of water, the consistency is very similar to egg. You can have your alternative, which will be cholesterol free and will only have good fat in it and you are also harming no chickens. So it's a win-win for your body and for the animals. So if you would like to check out some of my own recipes, I'm gonna link for you down below my mini chocolate nutty flapjacks, chocolate truffles, chocolate and vanilla cupcakes, almond and chocolate cupcakes, and my vegan cheese and onion pastries. So if you try any, please let me know. I'd be really intrigued to see what you did and see how it turned out. And also go follow my Instagram because I post so much food on there. So if you are a foodie like myself, um, yeah, go follow me. So that is all I have for you today. I really hope that you found this video insightful. I hope that you learned something and I hope that you can go and live a joyful and cozy huga lifestyle in a loving and cruelty-free way. Please feel free to subscribe and comment and like and share and all that good stuff. And go check out HelloVeganBeat.com for more tips on living a healthy and happy life. Okay, thank you so much. Until next time.